Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and uh, I am playing with the AI Structure Filter, which is a new filter coming in Luminar 4 when it becomes publicly available in November sometime. So, um, you know, when they first announced AI Structure, they said, hey, it's human aware. Uh, you can add structure, but because it's human aware, it's not. It's going to apply structure to things that aren't human, I guess, um, and avoid like the face, uh, the skin, that sort of thing. It's also sky aware, water aware. It pick, picks out the landscape. In other words, it uses AI to apply structure where it thinks you're going to want it and not apply it where it thinks you don't want it, um, which seems really good. And I haven't really spent a lot of time um, in previous videos talking about this. In fact, I think I've spent almost no time. So I thought I would change that today. So let's hop into it. I've got a photo here by my friend Robert Vanelli of the Skyloom Education Team. I used one of his portrait photos in my portrait video, which you can get there. And most of the videos and the and the sort of the conversations, if you will, around AI structure have been, hey, you know, they, they're human aware or the filter is human aware. So if you drag the structure to the right, like I do here, it'll pick up um, the human and not impact their face but instead it will impact like the background and things like that and as you can see I think it did a great job here it's it's very simple you've got a boost slider as well if you want to amp up the effect so I very quickly went from that to that so it's effectively impacted the background I think the hat a little bit um, and the other great thing is uh, I'm gonna reset boost and as I said the other great thing is you can go negative and so you can drag it to the left um, and it, it does similar things. However, in this case, as you notice, it is uh, doing a bit more negative effect on the skin. So let me show you that. There's a before and after. So I feel like when I went positive, let me try that again up close. Hang on, let me get a hold of that. It doesn't appear to be picking up very much of the skin, which is good, right? But when I go negative uh, and go left, it seems to be picking up more of the skin. I don't know, it's kind of... Um, Hard to tell if it's more one way or the other, but it does seem to pick up a little bit of the skin, which is fine with me. It's actually, um, I think, works well as a kind of a skin smoothing mechanism in the case of this photo. But the truth is, as you probably know, I don't shoot a lot of portraits. I shoot other stuff, cityscapes, landscapes. So I wanted to dive in and use this tool on those kind of photos and show you how it works there as well. Okay, here's a good example. Let me just drag this to the right and you will see, and I'll hit boost as well. And you will see that that photo is becoming very structured in the foreground. And if you look at the sky, I mean, yeah, the sky's had a little bit of an impact, but I've also got it at 88 with a boost of 42. So let me just zoom in and let's look at the structure here because that's really what I want to impact. And let me see the before and the after. You're not really noticing very much in the sky, but if you look in that structure, uh, or I should say in the architecture and the stonework, you're picking up a lot of that structure and that boost. So, you know, um, when I back out, some of these clouds are picking up some of that, but I think it's okay. I don't think it looks bad at all. I think it actually um, looks pretty good on this image. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna grab another photo and keep showing you a few more examples of how it works. Here's one. Now this photo has been previously edited, but I'm gonna go ahead and just drag structure. And what you will notice is it does impact a little bit of the sky. It definitely impacts the building and the woodwork there kind of at the water's edge but it, it is picking up some of the reflection. So let me show you the before and the after. It's definitely having some impact in that bottom of the frame, even though it's water. But here's the thing, it's not clear water. It's not like some sunset on a lake. Um, this is actually a reflection in the water. So my guess is it's saying, hey, are those buildings? Maybe we should give them a little bit. Um, let me show you again the before and the after. Now, if you don't like that, of course, you have the masking tool and you can come in here and say gradient mask and uh, you could just come in here and do something like, actually I did that wrong, there we go. Um, flip that around and you know, something like that. So your mask looks like that. It's been applied to the top and not applied to the bottom. So there's, uh, let me show you again the before and the after. So that's taking the gradient mask to a selectively apply AI structure just to the top because it did seem to me like it was picking up some in the water. I don't think it looked bad, but it was definitely picking some up. Let me get another photo. Okay, a photo like this is a good example. So I'm gonna drag that pretty heavily to the right and I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna come over here to the water. And I mean, if you look at it, right, let me show you the before and the after. I mean, this water over here on the left where it's clear is not getting crunchy but these reflections are picking up a little bit. I mean, just a little bit, whereas the boats are picking up more. And I'm at 76. 
I'm just going to hit boost. Um, you know what? Let's just go to 100 and 100 because uh, we're not editing for reality here. But I mean, if you look at it, even so, we're getting some noise in the water. But you know, I think um, honestly, it's considering I'm, I'm double 100 here. That's pretty insane. And um, you know, it's not it's not terrible. It is overdone. So let me take that down to a, a, probably a more normal level and zoom back into that water. But like, if you look at that boat, I think that. Um, before and after, I mean, I think it looks good and the water looks good too. So a couple more examples. Here's a fun example. This has very little that I would ever apply structure to. So I'm gonna go ahead and add quite a bit of structure. That's 63. Um, and did the clouds and sky get structure? Yeah, they did. I mean, if you look at them, right? So before and after, but considering I'm at, well, 62, sorry. Considering I'm at 62, I don't really think it looks overdone. That looks kind of like what clouds look like. Now, um, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you may know that I tend to prefer kind of this really smooth skies. Um, but there are definitely times, like this image is one, I think that it works to amp up a little bit of structure in the sky um, and, and give it a little bit of oomph. So there's before and the after. You've got a bit more, it seems to be applying more heavily to the land. Let me show you again, before and after. But it is definitely applying in the sky. But I don't think it looks bad. And even the reflection in the sky, tiny bits coming up there as well. But again, I, I think it looks pretty cool. So this is an example of how it's working. Um, does it detect skies and reflections and things like that? It seems to, but it seems to still apply a little bit, especially if the sky has uh, some some texture to it, uh, meaning like you know clouds with like um, some form or, or shape to them. Whereas like a really clear sky, like in that one with the boats, um, the reflection and that sort of thing didn't look like there was anything happening there at all. Let me get another image. Okay, this photo, once again, I'm dragging AI structure, and yeah, it's picking up some in the clouds. This is a good example where I'm at 57, so what was I, at 62 or 63 in that last one? If you look at the clouds before and after, they're picking up a little bit of contrast, especially the clouds, these lower ones are getting a little bit darker, so they seem a little bit more contrasty. Uh, and the upper clouds are getting a little bit more shape, and of course the spots on my lens are showing as well. Uh, but this is a long exposure. If you look at the water, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Um, I actually, you know, let me let me just try the reverse, right? So there is a negative structure, and if you boost that, let's see, it's getting even more negative. So um, you might like that look in the water in the sky, in which case you come in with the uh, brush mask and you just say erase, and you just erase that from the buildings like that. And I'm just gonna do this real quick and sloppily because we're friends and I'm not trying to do a good masking job. Let's pretend that was good. Let me show you how sloppy it was. Yeah, sloppy. Uh, but anyway, that was a quick, you know, uh, basically a double negative because I took the amount negative and then I boosted it. So it's amplifying whatever I do on the amount slider. And then I masked it in or technically out of the buildings in order to amplify that soft effect in the sky and the water. So you can still use it. In other words, just the same way I have used structure in previous versions of Luminar. It's just that it applies it more AI based here, which I think is really helpful. Let me get one more image. Okay, first I wanna brighten this image. So I'm gonna use a little bit of accent AI and I don't wanna spend any time in these other filters because again, um, I've said this before, uh, not in this video, but I'm gonna say it now and that is we're in beta still. So Luminar 4, the interface, the filters, things may change. So I just wanted to clarify that and make that uh, announcement, if you will. But if I drag AI structure here, um, I feel like it's amping things up in the rocks um, pretty well. Is it bringing up some texture in the water? It is, yeah, if you look at it, let me show you, let me just turn off this filter. There's the before and the after. But I gotta admit, I mean, I like it because it's, it's amplifying the motion and kind of the thrash of uh, this, it's not a long exposure, what is it? Um, a third of a second. I was like, where's the where's the third of a second? Um, so, you know, it's amplifying that a little bit, but I think it looks cool. So there's before and after. So again, it's working pretty well. Now, if I come negative, right, you're gonna get that smoother effect. And it's gonna, you know, it, it's going smooth across the whole photo, but um, I, think it's, um, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I don't think I'm losing everything in those rocks, even going negative, but I'm definitely, I feel like I'm losing more in the water. I know I said one more photo, but I've got one more photo. Okay, this last one, I'm just gonna drag this significantly to the right, and I mean, wow. Now, is the sky different? It is. Um, is there a little bit of stuff you can see in the water down below? Yeah, I can see a little bit, but again, you know, that's easy. You come in here and say brush, 
and you say erase, and then you come in here and you erase that um, massive structure increase from the lake, and I'm trying to do that while I'm talking to you, which is kind of hard. So it's gonna be sloppy, but let's say I kinda got it. Um, this is Pato Lake and the Canadian Rockies. Um, let me turn that off. But if you look at that before and after, one filter, right, AI structure, there's the before, there's the after. I feel like the mountains look great. Um, I think the sky is actually improved. Now, did it pick up some structure? Yeah, it did. I mean, there's, a, there's the before, and if you look specifically just at the clouds, there's the after. They have a little bit more texture, and you know what? It looks fine to me. Um, if I boost, let's see what happens. I have not done all these things part of recording this video. Um, I just experimented with a couple of photos. But look at that. I mean, I've boosted these trees and these rocks, and they are rich and detailed and structure looking, and the sky looks lovely, I think. So now, in every case here, this is not necessarily how I would edit these photos. This is an example of the filter at work, kind of going left and right and boosting or not boosting different photos, just to show you how it works and kind of um, sort of whet your appetite for when AI structure is in your hands. But there's the before and there's the after with AI structure. I think it looks beautiful. Clouds are nice. Even though they picked up a little bit, it's not obsess um, excessive at all. Um, but the mountains are crisp and the rocks uh, and these trees are crisp. And man, I just think it looks great. So that's how it works. I just kind of wanted to give a tour of the filter because um, I think it got a lot of talk at the beginning, but most of it was around, hey, you can edit portraits like this and you know, you can amplify some of the details in the background without messing up the skin. And you can, it works well. But I think it works really well in landscapes and cityscapes too. So I'm excited for you guys to have AI structure when Luminar 4 comes out next month. Again, we're in beta, so some things may vary. That's why I have not been doing videos about the UI and a whole lot of filters or full workflow videos yet because I'm waiting for things to, to settle down. As I said in a previous video, I've already had some changes to the, the product and I just wanna wait until um, things are settled before doing too much of that. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you're uh, continue to be excited about Luminar 4, which is coming pretty soon. And I hope you're excited about AI structure. I think it's pretty cool. It's definitely useful. And it's nice to have these uh, intelligent uh, filters and features that are gonna help us make our jobs easier, I think. So that was it for today's video, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a super awesome day. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.